Audi's A4 Allroad debuted in Australia in 2012. When it was a 150 limited edition run to see whether or not Australians would be interested in the jacked up A4. Turns out they were, they sold a lot. So they brought it in as part of the standard lineup and they discovered that, well, we bought nearly as many all roads as we did Avance. So what do you do when that happens? Well, instead of having one in the lineup, you have two. And when I say there's two, I mean a petrol and a diesel. So you can get the two litre TFSI or the two litre TDI. The car spec is based on the Quattro versions of the standard A4 Avant, and you only pay an extra 1500 bucks. If you like your jacked up wagons, this might be the one for you. The A4 Allroad is now powered by a choice of engines, both 2 litre turbos, but one diesel and one petrol. They're both Quattro, obviously, with a 7-speed S-Tronic or dual-clutch transmission to get the power from engine to tyres. The Allroad rides 37mm higher than the standard A4 Avant, but is still a fair bit lower than its Q5 stablemate. Now the old one only came with one engine, and that was the diesel. And with this new Ultra engine, there's, uh, the fuel economy figure has dropped below the luxury car tax threshold, so Audi is bringing in the two of them. The spec is based on the A4 Avant TFSI and TDI Quattro. We've only so far driven the TFSI, and as expected, it's just like an A4, only higher. So you get a little bit of body roll when you're going through the corners, nothing to get too worried about, and if it really does bother you, get the adaptive suspension, simple as that. On the outside, you get a new grille with the vertical slats, new lower bumper treatment, standard adaptive LED headlights or the optional matrix units, taller roof rails, and some chrome or aluminium look bits and pieces. Inside is standard A4, which means brilliant. This is by far the best interior in the segment. It's got a standard 8.3 inch screen for the MMI system, CarPlay and Android Auto. The boot isn't much bigger than the sedans, just 505 litres plays 480, but you can organise what you do get in there. The all-road also debuts a new driving mode called off-road. This mode ensures that the all-wheel drive stays on, no matter what. Also new on the all-road is the new ultra-efficiency tech. This disconnects the rear wheels and makes the all-road front-wheel drive to save fuel. We've also got the car with the Technic package, which adds the virtual cockpit. We always go on about how great that is and the heads-up display, which is also very good, so you can put your nav and your speed and all that stuff in it. There's very little to say to complain about in this car. I mean, it's, it's an A4 Avant, so the boot's probably a bit small. It's only 25 litres bigger than the sedan, which isn't very much, so you're not really buying it for the space, you're buying it for the look. Um, you do get all of the Audi goodness. It's just a little bit higher, but not as high as a Q5. I mean, that's basically what this car's about, not buying an SUV but still getting a wagon. I mean, it doesn't really matter, I guess. It's got the same things as the A4 that, that might bother you. The wing mirrors are tiny, like really tiny, um, but that means they don't make any noise. This car, up to the legal limit, perfectly fine. The ride height doesn't do anything to, to change what a relaxed, easy-going car this is and always has been. The, the engine's very strong, I mean, because it doesn't weigh any more, I mean, it's, it's 80 kilos lighter than the old one, in fact, um, it just gets on with the job, and in petrol form, it does zero to 106 seconds. Probably not on the dirt. The one difference that is in this car is there is an off-road mode, which locks in all-wheel drive. Now, the reason it has to do that, because in the other modes, there's Ultra, which is ultra efficiency, and it's new on the all roads to boo on this particular car. What that does is it very simply just disconnects the rear wheels when you're on the move and it wants to save fuel. There's nothing tricky about it, but it does save about 0.3 litres per 100 k's, and there is, they say fractions of a second, but they didn't say how many, uh, of, of switching back to all-wheel drive. So if you are out on the loose or the muddy stuff and you want to make sure you are always in all-wheel drive, off-road is the mode you want. But apart from that, it's basically an A4 bomb. Can't really argue with that.
The new A4 Allroad is a significant jump forward, just like the standard A4. You've got two choices of engine, which you didn't have before. You've got a lot of standard safety gear and all of the tech gear you can add to it. It's a fine car. There aren't many cars like this left on the market because of the massive onslaught of SUVs. So firstly, it's nice to see that Audi is still keen to make a car like this, and second, that people are willing to buy them. And if you want to know more about this car, you can read our full review here.